All right, hi guys. Today we are going to close our unit with voice and dialogue, although we'll be definitely using these skills, especially in our upcoming taking a risk personal narrative that you are going to write. So today I'm gonna to walk you through a quick check to make sure you have all of the must haves, all the goodies, all the requirements in your dialogue. And these are, these are gonna be lively, these are gonna be fun. I can't wait to read them. And by the way, you guys are doing excellent work with your writing this year. I'm so pumped and thrilled and really enjoying your pieces every time I read them. So today we have an opportunity to make sure that you get the best grade possible. You may submit your dialogues at the end um, today or you may submit them tomorrow. So we give you a little due date window. So I'm going to go through some must-haves and then when you're done you can you have a choice. You can either work on your dialogue and bringing that bad girl to submission or you can enjoy just some cozy time with your book. So that'll be the first little part of our lesson today. And the second part, we are going to launch a new little mini unit on sentence fluency, the flow of your writing. And so you're going to notice how, how your writing really starts to change and how it sounds differently, a little bit more eloquent, a little bit more fluent, and gets you away from short, choppy, robotronic type of writing. So right now I'm going to pause. And I'm going to have you pull up your dialogue writing assignment. Keep it on the down low. So I'll meet you in just a sec. Okay, one of the new things that we looked at is called taking action. And it's a simple thing, but it has, a, it has great effect, like a lot of the little techniques we've learned with writing this year. And it, it is just what it sounds like. You're taking on or adding on a little bit of action to, to the dialogue, to whatever the person is saying. So just, this is just a quick example here. Mitchell, would you please join the rest of the class in focusing today? Mrs. Prentice asked, and then I simply put a comma and then I add a verb here. And a verb is an action word. So what am I doing as I say that? I, she asks, hitting just the right note of sarcasm. Yes, ma'am, he replied, looking down at his desk. So what is the person doing as they mutter those, those words? Usually we're not just, you know, stiff during conversation. Usually we're doing something while we're talking to somebody. Ha, you're busted, teased John, pointing his finger at Mitchell and sticking out his tongue. So that's taking action. So I'll give you a few moments to check out your piece and you just need two, you need two examples of that. We don't wanna do it every time they talk, but it's neat to add that in, adds a little bit of action in with the dialogue to help paint the picture, to help tell the story. So I'll give you a few moments, teachers, you can pause and have kids either underline or add in their example of taking action. So just take a few minutes there. Okay, let's just revisit the format. Yo, Papa Mario, we getting the stolen pittance tonight? Questioned Tony, rubbing his hands together in excitement. So notice here, you indent, you press tab to start your dialogue. It, the exact words a person says are in quotation marks. When they're done talking, you put your comma on the inside, quotation mark, and then how the person says it. Question Tony, comma, and then I tagged the action there. When a new person talks, you, you go down, enter tab. Yeah, you knucklehead, told you a million times, be at the docks by 12, instructed Papa Mario. Oh, yeah, exclaimed Tony, we're going to be rolling in the dough soon enough. Papa Mario replied, cool your jets, kid. This job isn't going to be a simple one. Yeah, yeah, see you tonight, pops, added Tony. So it's easy to tell who's talking. Well, one, I changed color, but when you open up your independent reading book and you're noticing the format of dialogue, you can tell it's a new person because the writer, the author will go enter tab. So check out yours. Is your dialogue indented every time a new person talks? And the second thing on our checklist, um, you have to have 10 little pieces of dialogue. So each person talks five times. You can definitely have more, but 10 is the minimum. We wanna see that you can have a conversation brought to life. This is just a lesson that'll springboard into our taking a risk personal narrative, our big grade for this trimester. You're gonna to wanna to put dialogue in there, the exact words your coach said to you or what your friend said. And so we have to make sure you know how to do it. So enter tab every time you have a new person speak. Now noticing on this line, you can have somebody talk several times. They can say several sentences, and I don't need to put each individual sentence in quotation marks, just when they start, and then when they're finally done speaking, comma, quotation, instructed Papa Mario, period. And a review, right here I can do a comma, 
I can do a question mark, I can do an exclamation point, but the period has to go when the person's at the very end of the sentence. You don't want to have a double period, like period here and here. So again, it's just a comma, like a pause there. Well, yeah, exclaimed Tony, we're going to be rolling in the dough soon enough. You might not do this, but if you want to put the exclaim Tony and kind of interrupt the sentence, you can. That is just always set off again with commas. Papa Mario replied, comma, cool your jets, kid. This job isn't going to be a simple one. You can put the Papa Mario replied at the beginning if you want to, um, to ch kind of change up your format. So our checklist, you need to have two examples of taking action. We're going to underline those. Meet me at the docks, ordered Vinny, loading his revolver, period. Highlight your examples of figurative language. You needed two. Figurative language adds voice and feeling, so it's a simile using like or as. You can have onomatopoeia, like bang, pop. You can have a metaphor. There's some lively figurative language here. He calls them um, a knucklehead. I told you a million times, be at the docks by 12, so that's some exaggeration. We're going to be rolling in the dough soon enough, right? He's kind of using a metaphor. Cool your jets, kid. There you go. Another metaphor. So this one is rich with figurative language. Do you have some? You just need two. And finally, different fireball verbs for said. We don't want to just said. Said is dead. So what can you use? This, this writer used questioned, exclaimed, instructed, added. So that's fun. Okay. So at this time, I'm going to have you check over your dialogue. If you want a buddy to check through it too, to edit, that's great. So you have the next 10 minutes to go through your dialogue. Or if you feel like it's done and you've done this good work, you may submit and you can enjoy some cozy time with your book. So we'll be back in 10 minutes. Thank you. All right, can't wait to read your dialogues. So our next unit is on sentence fluency. We've looked at a lot of the traits of writing. We started with word choice, fireball word choices. We tasted those fireballs. We looked at how proper nouns add pizzazz, so not just the restaurant, but Buffalo Wild Wings. We looked at strong action verbs in the story car trip, all those verbs for like puking, like upchuck, vomiting, hurl. You guys wrote your own action narrative. We saw action verbs in Amigo Brothers. We did a lot of work with, with ideas, showing versus telling. And you had those disgusting, nasty, repulsive descriptions of the messy room. We looked at how writers organize. We organize arguments, arguments for name brand clothing. And we looked at even how um, if the, the voting age should be, should be lowered, you looked at that argument on your election day virtual learning work. And our final trait of writing to follow voice, voice, the feeling, the magic. And this one is called sentence fluency. And it is really how it sounds. It's, it's the flow of the writing. It's how your writing sounds. It's the smoothness versus the choppiness. It's really when you read the writing aloud, how it plays to the ear. Okay. And so today you just need one, one little resource, and that is in Google Classroom. Under sentence fluency is the name of our post, the title, and you have some student slides. They're just called sentence fluency student slides. So I will pause and I'd love to invite you to go ahead and find these slides. And we're gonna learn some different techniques to add some flow to our writing. So I'll meet you in a second. So starting on this slide here, um, I put a righteous horn with, you know, a saxophone with, with notes flowing out of it. That's, what's, that's what sentence fluency is. It's how your writing flows. So let's just grab a quick deck, uh, definition. It is the flow of the writing. It is the smoothness versus the choppiness. So on your slide, your slide simply looks like this. Let's go ahead and write some of these quick notes. Sentence fluency is the flow of the writing. So that could be one quick note. It is the smoothness versus the choppiness. That's it. Just those two. If you want to add something else in there, sentence fluency is how the writing plays to the ear or how it sounds when read. Okay, so we'll give you a few seconds to write the flow, the smoothness versus the choppiness. I'll pause and meet you back. Okay, so you've got this note. I want to give you an example. Okay, I'm going to read to you a little passage that illustrates the importance of sentence fluency. This sentence has five words. Here are five more words. Five word sentences are fine, but several together become monotonous. Listen to what is happening. The writing is getting boring. The sound of it drones. It is like a stuck record. The ear demands some variety. Okay, 
So it's boring. When you keep using sentences that are the same length and are just subject, verb, the rest of the thought, it's so boring. It's so tedious. Now listen. I vary the sentence length and I create music. Music. The writing sings. It has a pleasant rhythm, a lilt, a harmony. I use short sentences and I use sentences of medium length. And sometimes, when I am certain the reader is rested, I will engage him with a sentence of considerable length, a sentence that burns with energy and builds with all the impetus of a crescendo, the roll of the drums, the crash of the cymbals, sounds that say, listen to this, it is important. And so the final one is a long sentence, and I love it. And we learned the very first week of school that short sentences add drama when we read that mentor text, Bedhead. It was big. It was bad. Bad, right? Like if you say, it was time, or I did it, it's done, right? Short sentences add a lot of drama. So I want you to have, when you write, I want you to have some short ones, some long ones that really flow. I want you to get away from always writing these short, robotronic, choppy sentences like, I went to school, it was fun, I came home, ate a Twinkie, kicked the dog, the end, right? Boring, choppy, lame. So you need some tools in your toolbox. And it's not necessarily your fault if you already, if you always write with I did this, she did this, a person's name, you know, Tony did that, my dog, like subject, verb, the same old, boring, repetitive, redundant pattern. It's not your fault because that's just what you know. But now it's time to get a little bit more eloquent and articulate with our writing. And so you need some techniques, you need some tools. So we're here to teach you those tools to unlock your, I don't know, your fluency. So let's take a look at the pros. What do they do? We read two great short stories, After 20 Years and Amigo Brothers. So I noticed that they use what is called a participial phrase. Hoo hoo. It is simply an ING opener. Or you could put it at the end as a closer. Finding no takers, comma, Felix decided to split to his aunts. Antonio nodded, spraying water out between his teeth. So we're going to learn some neat little phrases. And a phrase is just a group of words, okay? It can't stand alone as a sentence because it doesn't have a subject and a verb. But it's just a group of words that adds, um, it modifies the sentence, it adds some description. This mega sentence here is quite interesting. And the bottom one is from after 20 years. It also has a participial phrase, several, in fact. Trying doors as he went, twirling his club with many intricate and artful movements, turning now and then to catch, to cast his watchful eye down the Pacific thoroughfare. The officer, with his stalwart form and slight swagger, made a fine picture of a guardian of the peace. And that's when we opened after 20 years and we saw that policeman on patrol, right? Um, and they used all these amazing... INGs. So sentence fluency, it, you can use the ING. We're going to learn that, the participial phrase. So when, you know, whoever you live with asks you what you learned today, I learned the participial phrase. Ho, ho. Uh, how to start with an adverb, an L-Y opener, which skillfully, gracefully, um, hungrily, ravenously. You could start with a double adjective, which is really cool. We'll show you that. And we got a review coming back at you via positive. My cat, a furry tank, stole my chicken drumstick. Sometimes you'll see us refer to this, no two sentences start with the same word. Now that's kind of ridiculous if you're writing a long piece. Obviously, you will have sentences that start with the same word. And it is okay if you start with sentences with the and I and he and she. But we need to give you some more tools. We just don't want your sentences to be boring and the same sentence construction over and over again. If you're writing a piece that's just a paragraph, you should have sentences that start in a different way every time. This year, uh, a little bit later, we're going to learn compound and complex. Instead of Sarah went to the concert, she got home late, you know, short, choppy, robotronic. Sarah racked out at the concert, comma, and later she crept into the house at 3 a.m. So that is a compound sentence, two sentences joined together. All right, so now it's time now it's time to learn some of this. So let's go to your first, your first little slide on the participial phrase. So go to slide two. All right, so slide two is the participial phrase. What is a participial phrase? It is an ing. It means you're starting with an ing word. And it's um, like a verb, like an action. But it also is kind of like half action, half adjective. So half verb, half adjective. So this kid, he's doing something. But it's describing him. It describes your subject. Can't stand alone as a sentence. It's just a little phrase. But it's in there and it adds some interest. 
some description to your overall sentence. So this is how you might normally start without thinking. The child pulled the fire alarm. Okay, the, start with the, boring. Kid, you know, the child, there's your subject, here's your verb, he pulled. Got it. Well, how did he do that? Let me show me. Okay, so maybe it's this little kid. Standing on his tiptoes, I like to make that sound so you can hear where the comma goes. Standing on his tiptoes, comma, the curious kindergartner reached for the alarm and snagged it. Oh, I like it. Let's try your own out. Okay, so you're going to put your cursor under here. The kid went to Mr. Amaral's office. That is pathetically boring, okay? I need a better verb than went, but first of all, you need to start out with an ing. So, you know, trudging reluctantly down the hallway, Johnny Rotten slumped to Mr. Amaral's office, period, okay? And then you'll try another one. The girls talked at the locker. That is so boring, right? Snickering wickedly, the teenage she-devils gossiped at the locker. So try it out. The very first thing you write, it cannot be the, it has to be an I-N-G. Have a little phrase, a comma, and then complete the rest of your sentence, all right? Give it a whirl. I will pause, try out two sentences starting with an I-N-G, and then we'll check back. Go for it. Okay, here's some nice examples. So underline your participial phrase. The kid went to Mr. Amaral's office, sweating profusely, comma, Tony Rebel trudged reluctantly to Mr. Emerald's office. So this little sweating profusely describes a kid, adds a little action, adds a little interest, and now you're starting with an ING rather than just, the kid did this. Snickering wickedly, the teenage she-devils gossiped at their lockers. So you started with an ING. And then make sure you have the comma, and then the subject, and you complete the sentence. So if you need more time working with a participial phrase, we can pause, you can do that. We're going to come back to the skill again tomorrow. So the participial phrase is an ing, opener, a comma, and then you write what your actual sentence is. Okay, let's go down to your next slide. Our next one is an adverb. And this is pretty simple. How to start with an ly word. Adverbs are the gossipers in writing. They gossip on whatever the verb is doing, right? So like, I don't know, if you're eating, how are you eating? Like messily, sloppily, grotesquely, you know, Connor slopped his food up. So they gossip on how it happens. He dialed her number. Boring. Started with he. Boring old subject he. How did he dial her number? <gasps> Nervously, Eddie slowly punched in the digits on his phone. So start with how that is happening. It's an L-Y word that describes the verb. How did he punch the digits in? Nervously. The kids left the building on the last day. The kids. Boring. That's not how you leave it. The last day of school, there is so much energy charging out those wing doors. What is it like? Like gleefully, joyfully, excitedly, enthusiastically. Your first word needs to be an L-Y word. So I want you to try it out. The dog ate his food, mm -mm. okay, ravenously, hungrily, crazily. So try it out. Start your next two sentences with an L-Y adverb, and I'll meet you back. So the kids left the building on the last day. What'd you put? Teachers, you can call on kids to share throughout, throughout today's lesson if you'd like. Gleefully, students rush out the seventh grade wing into the blinding daylight, joyfully, excitedly triumphantly, victoriously. The dog ate his food. Ravenously, the skinny stray scarfed down the dry kibble. So it's an L-Y word, a comma, and then you throw down your subject, your verb, the rest of the sentence. Okay? So you can have some fun sharing in your cruise. What, what crafty little sentence did you just create? Opening with an adverb. All right? And then I will meet you back with double adjective opener. All right? So here we are, starting with an adjective. An adjective, um, it's a descriptive, it's a modifier, but instead of modifying the verb, like the adverb gossiped on the verb, like how did you, you know, sneak up to the door, like um, quietly, carefully, nervously, this one describes the noun, the subject. So the substitute entered the classroom. Let's, instead of describing the verb entered, let's focus in on the substitute two describing words for this person. Anxious and fearful, comma, Mr. Puzzled stumbled into the kindergarten class. Hmm. 
what can you do? Sophie left the gym after cheerleading tryouts. So decide, did she make it or she cut? You need two words to describe Sophie, like gleeful and jubilant, comma, Sophie bounded after the gym, you know, out of the gym from cheer. Joyful and expectant, Sophie left the gym. Or maybe she didn't make it, like dejected and heartbroken. Sophie slumped from the gym after cheer. So two words to describe our girl, Sophie. And um, go for it. I'll meet you back. Pause. And then you can share out. And we'll come back to some um, examples. Okay, the adjective. How could you open with two words to describe Sophie? Oh, she didn't make it. Infuriated and humiliated, comma. Sophie bolted from cheerleading tryouts, the gym door slamming behind her. Okay, what a cool, sexy sentence. Infuriated, humiliated, okay? So starting with two adjectives, two describing words. Very cool. So our last one today is the appositive. And this is not new learning. We learned the appositive at the beginning of the year when we learned about nouns, people, places, and things. But you'll notice the appositive can go a couple different places in the sentence. We use it at the beginning. A wacky mathematician, Mrs. Cargill, is my pre-algebra teacher. But oftentimes you see it in the middle, interrupting. My first car, comma, a Pontiac station wagon with fake wood paneling, comma, was a lacking stock, was a laughing stock of the high school parking lot. My dad, a Norton Shores police officer, took me on a stakeout last Friday. So it's your noun, your dad, but what's like a little noun phrase to describe him? Oh, he's a Norton Shores police officer. My first car, that's my noun, but what was it? Oh, is a Pontiac station wagon with fake wood paneling. And it really was. Uh, I'll skip down to this one. My mom, a near dictator, has grounded me for a month. So, checking out your slide. Okay, let's review the appositive. The substitute, a, so come up with a little noun phrase, and then finish the sentence. Um, if you want to do a little extra extra, you could do one about your sibling. My brother, a... Okay, a little Satan's little helper. Um, my sister, what is she? Okay, a cackling little she devil, comma, okay, and then continue that. So I will pause, craft your a positive, and then do some sharing in your crew. Meet you back. Okay, so just a little uh, first blush with sentence fluency and crafting sentences that don't always start with the or my or he or she. We learned the participial phrase opening with an ing. So it's like a little verb descriptor. Standing on his tiptoes, the kid reached for the alarm and snagged it, sweating profusely, snickering wickedly, comma, and then you have your sentence. So as we write for the rest of the year, we will have sentence fluency on our rubrics, and we may specifically ask for a participial phrase, and you'll underline it, highlight it, so you'll be accountable for using this type of sentence structure. But the cool thing is, is once we teach you these, you start naturally using them all the time. Today, we learned how to open with an adverb, an L-Y word. So instead of just Eddie's doing something, how is he doing? Like nervously, gleefully, the students rushed out of the seventh grade wing. You know, the dog is eating ravenously, furiously, the skinny stray scarfed down his kibble. You could gossip on the verb, but you could also gossip on the noun with a couple of adjectives, describing words. So instead of Sophie left, infuriated, humiliated, she bolted from the gym doors. And a little review ski from earlier learning via positive. My cat, a furry tank, stole my chicken drumstick. My first car, a Pontiac station wagon with fake wood paneling, was a laughing stock of the high school parking lot. You now have four new sentence constructions at your disposal. Tomorrow we're going to play around with these again. I know it needs some repetition, some practice to get them to use the commas, but know that you are already becoming a little bit more eloquent, articulate, and interesting in your writing. And that's really our goal for you this year. We want you to to move you from a third grade writer with these boring, short, choppy sentences to sentences that really flow and make you sound a little bit more brainy, intelligent, and attractive. So awesome work today. Boom. We will see you tomorrow.